We're in Word 2019, Jasper Active Lesson 3. We're going to do setting tabs. This is kind of a long activity um, and it can be a little bit tricky, so prepare yourselves. The first thing we're going to do is create a new blank document. So I'm going to click into Word and press Control N to create a new blank document. I'm going to type ABC Media. Let's zoom in a little bit as the title. And then in the paragraph group of the home tab, I'm going to click center. So home tab, paragraph group. I'm going to select uh, align center right here. You can always press control E, but again, when we're working in Jasper Active, you'll want to make sure you're doing it the way it says to do it because it's looking for those specific clicks. Once you've pressed or uh, center, you're going to hit enter, go down to the next line, and type consolidated balance sheet and press enter. So you're going to notice because my first line was centered that now all of the lines below it are also centered. I'm going to type at June 30 and press enter. So these three lines are centered, but once I'm down here, I want to align this back to the left. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut control L. So press and hold the control key, tap the letter L, and that will move your insertion point back over to the left. Go ahead and mark that as answered. And let's go to step two. Oh, wait, make sure. See, always got to read the directions all the way through. Press enter again to insert more space between the title and the upcoming report figures. So make sure you press enter so that you can see I have a blank line here, but here is where I'll start typing. Now let's move to the next, next task. We're gonna use the tab selector. You're gonna make sure that your ruler is visible. So mine is visible, but if yours is not, you wanna go up to the view tab, to the show group, and make sure that the ruler box is checked. And then you'll be able to see the rulers on the side and along the top. So the tab selector is this funky little thing right up here. Typically when you hit tab, and I'll show you, it's, it will move your insertion point over half an inch. But you can actually set your tabs to do different things. So we're going to be looking for the right tab selector. So if I hover over my tab selector, it's showing me left tab. If I click it again, there's the center tab. If I click it again, there's the right tab. Now you might need to click all the way through because you're going to see there's a lot of different ones in here. And sometimes maybe you go too far or it doesn't show up the first time around. So just click until you see it looks like a backwards L. And again, if you hover, it will tell you which one it is. What that's going to do is I can put my tab selector up here on my ruler so that when I hit the tab key, it will move my cursor over to whatever that spot is, and then the text will appear to the right of that. All right, so I'm going to click at the 3.5 inch mark on the ruler. So there's my three. The half inch mark is this little dash right here. I just have to click right there, and you're going to see that right tab marker is going to show up right there. I also want to put one over here at the five and a half inch mark. So what this will do is if I hit the tab key the first time, and I'll show you, it's going to jump right over here to this three and a half inch mark. If I hit it again, it's going to go over to the five and a half inch mark. So if I put a bunch of them in here, I could set it up so I can have as many as I want. And really, it just helps you set up columns without setting up a table. All right, so that's step number two. Go ahead and mark that as answered, and let's go to step three. All right, I'm going to hit the tab key, so it jumps over to this first tab mark, and I'm going to type the words current year. All right, so my tab selector, I think I told you incorrectly before, I was thinking the text goes to the right. The text actually goes to the left. Um, what it means is that that tab stays on the right side of the text. I'm going to press tab again, and I'm going to type previous year. 
and then I'm going to press enter to start a new line. I'm going to click on the home tab and in the paragraph group click the show hide formatting marks bucket button so we can activate that. Um, up here in the home tab paragraph group we're going to click on this guy. So what that's going to show me is all of the formatting that I've done in this document. So anytime you see this little dot right here in between words that means the space bar was hit. This guy that means that you hit the enter key and the arrow means that you hit the tab key. So you can see right here I hit the tab I hit the tab key once. I hit the tab key again. I hit enter. Go ahead and mark that step as answered and let's go to step four. So we're going to continue typing the rest of the table as seen in the following. So in our instruction panel it gives us some text and some numbers to include and we're going to press the tab to move to the next column and press enter at the end of each line. So it can be a little confusing when you're looking at your instruction panel to understand how you're supposed to do this. On this first line I'm going to type the word assets and I'm going to hit enter. Right, so I got assets from here. Now I'm going to type the word cash and hit the tab key. I'm going to type in the number 45,430. Hit the tab key again. Type 44,536. And I did include the dollar sign on these two. And then I'm going to hit the enter key. I'm going to type the word customer deposits hit the tab key and type 85,903, hit the tab key again and type 75,930. Right, so in our instruction panel, when you're looking at it, it kind of looks like these might be on two different lines. But if you zoomed out, you could see how it's laid out. Now we're going to save this document as balance sheet student in our My Projects folder. So go into File, Save As, and then Browse. And you're going to find your Jasper Active folder, and then go into your Name folder, and into My Projects. Change the title to Balance Sheet Student, and hit Save. And mark that as answered. For step five, we're going to open up a new document. This is the ABC Media document that's down at the bottom of your instruction panel or in your resource files folder. So what that's going to do, it's going to take, um, instead of making us type out all of the information, it's just going to open, us, open up a very similar document with more information in it. There we go. And I can mark that as answered. For step number six, I'm going to go ahead, first of all, I'm going to turn off my paragraph marks so that it's not uh, adding a lot of extra visual noise. We're going to select all of our text using the keyboard shortcut Control A. So press and hold Control, tap the letter A, and that's going to select all of our text. On the Home tab in the Paragraph group, click Line and Paragraph Spacing, and then click Remove Space After Paragraph. Home tab, paragraph group. Here's my line and spacing, line and paragraph spacing icon. And if I click the drop down arrow, it's going to show me some different options. So typically, when you start typing, there's automatically going to be some spacing that's defaulted into your text. And you can use these as you hover over them, see how my document changes? We're going to remove the space that's typically in after each line by clicking remove space after paragraph. So if I remove um, my cursor, you can see what my original document looked like. And I've got some space in between each line. So I'm gonna click remove space after paragraph. And now you're gonna see that space is gone. So it helps condense my document just a little bit. Mark that as answered, let's go to step seven. We're gonna <coughs> apply some formatting to the top title section. So select the text from ABC Media to the end of the word assets. So up here, I'm going to click and drag and go all the way down to the end of the word assets. So you're going to see that gets my top three lines. 
it gets the two title lines for my columns, which are current year and previous year, and then it has the assets title. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to bold by pressing and holding control and tapping the letter B as in boy. And that's going to bold all of those words for me. Now I'm going to select just the three title lines. And on the home tab, I click the arrow for font size and click 16. So home tab, font group, here's my font size. I'm going to click the down arrow and select 16. So I've just increased the font size of these three lines up here. All right, next, I'm gonna select the total assets line. So I gotta go through here and find it. It's at the bottom of this first set of uh, figures. So I'm gonna click and drag over total assets. I'm gonna press and hold the control key, and I'm gonna select some non-consecutive text. So if you look over in your instruction panel, it's gonna show you the text it wants you to select. Essentially, the first and the last words on each of these paragraphs here. So I have total assets selected. Press and hold control. I'm gonna select liabilities. I'm holding the control key down. I'm gonna select total liabilities. I'm holding the control key down. I'm selecting shareholders equity, total shareholders equity, and then total liabilities and equity. And then I can let go of the control key. So now it shows that I have all six of those lines selected. With only those lines selected, again, I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut to bold by pressing and holding control and tapping the letter B. Next, I'm gonna select only the values that are shown here. So 2,293,429 and 2,283,740 that are listed under total liabilities and equity row. So that's this very last one. So I'm gonna click and drag, and I can just drag over both of those because they're next to each other, even though there's some space here. On the home tab in the font group, we're gonna click the font dialog box launcher. And then I'm gonna click the arrow for underline style and select the double line option. So up here on the home tab in the font group, so you can see um, if yours is laid out like mine, you might see that there's actually an arrow next to the underline option where you could select this. But again, because Jasper is asking us to do it a specific way, we're gonna follow those instructions. So I'm gonna click on the dialog box launcher, which is in the lower right corner of that group. That's gonna open up the font dialog box for me. I'm gonna find the underline style option and select that drop down, and I wanna select the double line option. Now this one's not telling me what it is, but I can tell just by looking that this has two lines. That's the one I want. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now you can see it applied that double line option right there. I'm gonna, um, I already clicked okay to exit that dialog box. So that's the end of that step. We're going on to step number eight. So for this one, I'm gonna select each of the items listed under assets from cash to 1,927,350. Then on the ruler, I'm gonna click and drag the left indent marker two marks to the right. All right, so I'm starting at cash right here. I'm gonna click and drag all the way down to the end of this number right here. Okay, now I'm gonna go up and find my left indent marker, which is the little box down here at the bottom. And you can see that this is made up of three different items. So sometimes it looks like just a triangle and a square. Sometimes it's set up like an hourglass. But if you hover over them, each one of these has its own thing that it does. We want to make sure we click on left indent. So hover your cursor until you see left indent. And then you can click and hold it. Now on our ruler, you're going to see we have these little dash marks here. So we're gonna move this over two dash marks. So clicking and holding, flipping over one, two. And you're gonna see that really only those first lines moved. I'm gonna use the repeat keyboard shortcut to indent the items for the other two categories on this report. 
So I'm going to select the two lines of values for underneath liabilities, which is accounts payable and mortgage payable. Click and drag to select those, then press and hold control and tap the letter Y. You should see those move. Now the um, repeat function, it can be a little bit tricky. So you have to make sure you're doing it immediately after you do whatever it is that you wanna repeat. Otherwise, if you click somewhere else, it can uh, um, think that that's what you want it to do. So it can be a little particular. So if it doesn't work immediately, then just undo and try doing those again. Now next, I'm gonna select the two lines of values under shareholders equity. And once again, press control Y. So these should all now be indented the same. So mark that as answered and go to step nine. <clears throat> now, suppose you wanna adjust the columns more to the right to balance the information on the page. So you, you can see there's a lot of extra space over here. So I wanna take the columns, maybe move them over just a little bit. So I'm gonna click in the column heading um, for both of them. So I'm gonna click current year and previous year. Actually, no, I'm just gonna click my mouse right there in current year. And then on the ruler, I'm gonna start with this first one. So if you hover over your little tab selector button right here, where, or the mark that you made, if I click on it, I'm gonna move it over just one mark to the right. And you can see as I move it, that that current year moves with it. So only the title moved. I'm gonna mark as answered and go to step 10. So let's say I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go up here to my quick access toolbar and click on the undo button to move it back. Next, I'm gonna select from the column titles line to the end of the last value for total liabilities and equity. All right, so starting here all the way down because I wanna adjust the entire column. And now I can go up here and grab this right tab and I can move it over and now you'll see the whole tab is gonna move. Um, Jasper doesn't care particularly where you put it, so just practice moving those over just a little bit wherever you think it looks good. So I'm gonna spread these out just a little bit like that. That's all you need to do for step 10. And that's the end of that activity. So we'll see how it, all right, excellent.